Welcome, little friends. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us today on this beautiful Sabbath day. Yes, indeed. Thank you for being with us. Now, make sure you have your Bibles like we do so that you can be ready to follow our Bible story for today. And today's story is going to be based on the book of Exodus chapter 20. So make sure you put your bookmark on Exodus chapter 20. So before we continue, we are going to sing a song. Thank you so much for this beautiful Sabbath day that you have given us. Thank you for our friends who are with us. And thank you for your Bible stories, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit would help us understand them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Today's Bible story is called, How We Love God. Today's Bible story will teach us that because God loves us so much, He has given us His laws. Ten short rules that tell us how to be happy and how to be safe from Satan. With God's help, we can obey. Today's memory verse is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. I hope you all friends can do this also. Last week, we learned that God is love. He doesn't just love us. He is love. Yes. And we learned that the word love tells us what God is like and that his laws are all about how we love so that we can choose to be like him and not like Satan. The first four commandments tell us how to love God. And the last six tell us how to love each other. When we love God with all of our hearts and we love each other, then we can't help but be truly happy. Before sin came into heaven, the angels were perfectly happy because they were automatically loving God and each other. Yes, how nice. It was just as natural as breathing. 
We don't have to think about breathing. No, we don't. <laughs> we just do it. That's how it was with the angels. They just loved naturally. It was the same in the Garden of Eden before sin came. Adam and Eve loved God and each other naturally. They didn't even think about loving God or each other. They were perfectly happy. After sin came, everything changed. Now we don't naturally love God or each other. Yes. Instead, we are selfish like Satan. And that makes God sad because he knows how unhappy it makes us and others. Let's read what Romans chapter 8, verse 7 through 8 say. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now let's think. Is it important for us to know and understand God's Ten Commandments? Yes. Why not start memorizing them right now? He has promised to help you if you ask Him. And they're very easy. Even children can memorize them. Mm -hmm. God's people, the children of Israel, were camped at Mount Sinai. And they were having a very important meeting. God the Father and God the Son, who is Jesus, were together on that mountain. Their glory was hidden in the thick black cloud, or it would have killed the people. God the Holy Spirit was there too, speaking to each person's mind as they watched, felt, and listened to things that were happening. It was all, all very, very solemn and important, a meeting that they must never forget. The Israelites had been with the people in Egypt for a long time, and they had gotten used to their idols. Those gods were helpless and useless. Did you know that gods, well, idols, I should say, they can't hear, mm -hmm. see, mm -hmm. or breathe, or speak. Mm -hmm. They can't help anyway. It's just no. a statue. But it's a god, and they put a lot of decorations for the god. Mm -hmm. But the Egyptians believed that they were powerful, and many of the Israelites had even copied some of the ways they had worshipped their gods. Mm -hmm. That was bad. Now God must show them how wrong they were. Even though the people thought that they were worshipping God, and even though they had promised to trust and obey Him, they hardly knew Him at all. God must show them what He really is like. If they learn to truly understand and obey the Ten Commandments, then the children of Israel would know, trust, and love Him. And He would be able to keep every promise that He had made to them. Now let's think about the lesson. Do we also need to really know what God is like? Yes, yes. of course. Mm -hmm. It's very yes. important. <laughs> you are doing that right now as you study your Bible and learn about Him. How about let's read about this in Psalms chapter 119, verse 9 through 11. How can a young man clean his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Are you starting to learn the Ten Commandments and hide them in your heart? Mm -hmm. I hope we are. Even after we lived a million years in heaven, we will still keep learning more and more about God's wonderful law. Yes. There's just so much to understand about yes. it. Right? I know. But also, God made His law so easy to understand, even children can choose to obey it. As the children of Israel listened while God spoke the Ten Commandments, they were terrified. Mm -hmm. Let's read again this in Exodus chapter 20, verse 19. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us, lest we die. Now let's read verse 20 again. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for God has come to test you, that his fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Moses explained that God didn't want them to be afraid of him, didn't he? Mm -hmm. 
It was true that he wanted them to realize how holy and powerful he is. Yes. But he also wanted them to learn to love and trust him. You know, God wanted them to be afraid of sin, not to be afraid of him. God wants us to think of each of the commandments as a promise. And if we choose to obey them, he can keep Satan from destroying us. Mm, yes. God knows that since sin came, we can't obey by ourselves. Because now we naturally want to obey Satan. Mm. But Satan absolutely cannot make us obey him. And here's why. When we choose Jesus, he has promised to help us. And he will help us. He keeps his promises. He always keeps his promises. Yes. His law becomes like a strong wall around us to keep us safe from Satan. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. He is a fortress. Yes, his commandments is a fortress. Let's read more about this in Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you, except such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Think about what a wonderful promise that is. God can and will always help us, no matter how hard Satan tries to tempt us, right? Mm -hmm. We never have to obey Satan. We can always be safe inside the wall of God's law. Yes. Let's read more about this in Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. How wonderful! In heaven, Satan lied about God and said that we don't need to obey him or his rules. He is still saying the same lie. Everything in the Bible is about choosing to believe Satan's lies or to believe God and trust him to help us obey him. Now we're going to start to understand more about God's Ten Commandments. Let's read the first one in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3. You shall have no other gods before me. What are other gods? I don't know. Actually, other gods could be just about anything. Yes. Anything or anybody, including ourselves, that becomes more important to us than God has become a god. Yes. Yeah. What about um, looking at the mirror all day long? You know, that's not good. We should not be looking at the mirror all day long or taking selfies all day long. Should we go ahead and, and read the Bible and then we read it and we say, oh yeah, that's what it says. And, and then we go somewhere else and then we say something that is contrary to what the Bible says and we know what the Bible says. We're saying, ah, who cares about the Bible? I'm going to say whatever I want to say. You know, that is putting our words first and, and putting God's words to the garbage. Hmm. That's true. That's true. That's idolizing ourselves and our opinions. Yes. Yeah. And I think we all have to be very careful. Yes. The first commandment is really saying, make God most important. Why? Well, let's think about it. Who keeps our heart beating in our bodies? And working every second, who makes the sunshine and the rain, the fresh air so that plants can grow and make food for us to eat, who watches over us day and night, who speaks to our mind and reminds us not to listen to Satan, who came from heaven, chose to become a human being and died for us so that we can be safe from Satan? Who is coming again soon and has a wonderful home waiting for us in heaven? God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, each member of the Godhead. Yes, God is the answer to every question and we need them every second. We could never begin to count the many, many reasons to remember that God is more important than anyone or anything else. Yes, let's read Acts chapter 17 verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So many things can become gods. Mm -hmm. For example, 
Do we let something else be more important than taking time every day to talk to God, listen to Him, and learn about Him by reading the Bible? Mm. Sometimes the phone rings. Sometimes the baby cries. Sometimes the dog is barking, and we have to calm them down. Sometimes the milk is leaking, or sometimes the bread is burning. Sometimes people are hungry. I know. Sometimes many things come up in front of us, and we forget about God. Mm -hmm. Do we ever go to Sabbath school and church just to see our friends? Mm -hmm. No, we should not go to church on Sabbath just to see our friends. We should go there for the spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Because we go to church. Why don't we go to church? To learn about God. Yes. To meet with God. <laughs> yes, because when when God created Adam and Eve on the first seventh day that God created for the Sabbath day, you know, was there any church? Was there any buildings? No. no. They met with God face to face. Yes. And they worshipped Him. Over here on earth, if we see God, we're going to be blinded or, uh, you know. Like Paul? Yeah, just mm -hmm. like Paul in, in Damascus when he was walking, he got blinded. <laughs> it could have been worse than that. But, you know, God is so loving and kind that he doesn't want us to die. He wants us to meet with him, but through church. That's we right. go to church to meet with God. And that's how we worship him. Can you think of other things that can be gods? How about TV, videos, oh, that's a big one. music, sports, yes, that's a big one too. clothes, etc. You know, let's read Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. How can our belly be our God? You know, it makes me think of this uh, eating competitions. Have you ever seen that? Yes. There's like these eating competitions and they serve themselves as much as food as they can possibly put in their bodies. And they just eat and eat and eat and eat to win a prize. Mm, that, that can get messy. And they need to practice doing that. You know, some people don't go into that competition. Some people eat like that at home. You know. And we have to stop and think, does God want me to eat that much? Hmm. Or does what does God want me to eat? What That's does he want question. me to put in my body? He wants me to take care of my body and put the best healthy things that he has created, right? He doesn't want us to put things that do not work well, right? Mm -hmm. And this is introducing the the eight laws of health because it talks about temperance. That's mm -hmm. right. And temperance is I'm not I, I, I'm going to I'm going to sit down on the on the couch and start eating a lot of tomato. That's not you know temperance. Temperance. Yes. Temperance is when we go to the table, we take only 3 slices of tomatoes, we eat it with our beans and our rice and you know we have a healthy meal and we don't need like oh I'm going to eat a thousand avocados today <laughs> or That's tomatoes. Right. <laughs> And we should not um, go to church and we should not serve ourselves a lot of food and then mm -hmm. we go home and then we fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think about wrong eating habits as being God's? Well, right now you can ask God to help you not to let anything be more important than pleasing Him. He loves you and He wants you to put Him first so you can be truly happy. Let's read the next commandment, which is in Exodus chapter 4, verse 6. Let's open our Bibles to it. You shall now make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me by showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. This one is specifically forbids making and worshiping idols like many people do. One big problem with worshiping idols is that an idol can never give a true idea of what God is like. That's true. In my Bible, I have um, I have pictures. You know, I have little comments on what 
on what God is like. And I have these little um, thinking Helpers. parts mm -hmm. and that it talks about how what God is like. He's our strong soldier and he can fight for us. We also have a lot more over here, what God is like. He's like a tender shepherd and we are the sheep, you know? And it, in the whole book of Psalms, it, it talks about what God is like. How wonderful. And it reminds us how God is a strong, is a strong refuge for us. This um, paragraph says about what God is like. It says that God is our stronghold. A stronghold was a walled city or fortresses where people went when an enemy army had invaded the land. To say that God is our strength means that he will keep us safe in times of danger. Mm -hmm. So when Satan comes and tries to attack us, we know that God is a strong wall around us as a protection. So people who worship idols always get wrong ideas about God. Heathen people are afraid of their idols. They think that they can keep them from being angry by worshiping them and giving them gifts. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. He started giving food to the idols. Yes. And that is the reason why Daniel and his three friends didn't eat the king's food and didn't sit on the same table because they knew that the food was already presented to their idols. Yes. Mm. And how, how foolish Nebuchadnezzar was. Those idols can't even hear him, nor can they eat the food, nor can they do nothing for him. Nor can they bless the food. No. They can't do none of that stuff, but God is a living God. He will be there for eternity. Yes. And we also will be in heaven for eternity if we choose to obey him. You know, heathen people don't know the only true God that loves them. The second commandment describes God as a jealous God. But how can God be jealous? Did you know that there are right and wrong kinds of jealousy? Mm -hmm. God's kind of jealousy wants to protect us from anything that will hurt us. God knows that the children of idol worshippers usually copy what their parents do. Do you remember the sons of Noah who moved away because they chose to believe Satan's lies? Yes. They worshipped idols. Yes, I And they soon forgot God, and so did their children. Children whose parents love, trust, and obey God usually learn to know and love Him like their parents do. When they have children of their own, they teach them to love God, too. That makes God happy because he can bless them. The children of Shem chose to believe and worship God. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were from Shem's family. They taught their children to love and worship the only true God. But Jacob's family had been in Egypt so long, many of them were beginning to forget God. Now, God was doing all he could to help them know and trust him again. Idols can give people wrong ideas about what God is like. But could people who don't bow down to idols still disobey the commandments by believing wrong ideas about God? Oh yes, absolutely. Yes. People believe many things about God that aren't true. Some say there is no God. Others think he is cruel. Still others are sure he wouldn't punish sin. Mm -hmm. Only the Bible tells us the whole truth about God. Let's read now the third commandment and let's try to memorize it. Let's read in Exodus chapter 20 verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. What does vain mean? Did you guys have any idea what this may mean? Um, well, one way to say it is for nothing. Mm -hmm. So if you work hard making a beautiful sand castle and then a wave from the ocean comes in and washes it all away, mm. then a kid might say, or you may say, all the work for nothing. An adult may even say, all the work in vain. Yes, God asks us to use his name thoughtfully and reverently. Never use it carelessly for nothing, which means for no good reason. 
So the word vain also means for nothing, right? We all know that using God's name, cursing and swearing is taking his name in vain. By using any words that come from God's name or that even sounds like his name is also taking his name in vain, not respectfully and not reverently. Christ and Jesus are the same person who is God the Son. The Bible also calls him Lord and Savior. People who believe in and worship Christ are called Christians. True Christians believe the Bible and they love, trust, and obey God. But when people who call themselves Christians do not love, trust, and obey God, they are taking Christ's name for nothing mm -hmm. in vain, aren't they? Yes. Let's read Luke chapter 6, verse 46 to 49. Let's see what Jesus said about people who say they are Christians, but who don't obey him. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against that house, but could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation, against which the streams beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. They are building sandcastles, aren't they? Yes. Mm. Is it easy to get so used to hearing wrong and foolish words that we can actually start copying them? Is this commandment more important than most people think it is? Does it help us have more love and respect for our loving holy God? Yes. I am so glad we learned about God's love in His law. God is very strong and powerful and he loves us so much. If we ask God to help us obey them, he will do it. Well, do you remember what time it is? It's time for a memory verse! So, let's go over a memory verse for today, which is found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. That's right. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Perfect! I hope your friends can do this also. Let's thank Jesus for his precious Bible story that taught us about his perfect law of love in the Ten Commandments. We studied the first three, and we're studying how to love God and how to honor him. Let's ask him to put it in our hearts so that we may learn to love him more and more and love our neighbors as ourselves. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this precious story that you have given to us and help us to obey these Ten Commandments and not just to read them and learn about them, but to also use them in our lives and help us to obey them and write them on our hearts that way we may do your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What a beautiful lesson we had today. I hope you can share this bio story with someone this week and may this law of love become the foundation of our lives, shaping our thoughts, words, and actions as we seek to glorify Jesus and bless others. We'll have some music next to end the program and may you be blessed. Have a beautiful Sabbath day. Goodbye!